uh, March 3rd at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, we'll do a roll call and please state your name, your, uh, whether you're president or not. If you're not president, you don't have to say anything. Um, tell us where you are, please. Um, Doug Wilbur. Uh, present, Green Oak Township. Jenny Olney. Present, Northfield Township. Dana Forrester. I haven't heard from Dana. Does anybody know anything? Okay. Um, Denise Kabish said she wasn't sure she'd be able to make it. So I guess kind of with notice absent. Um, Anna, Anna Aquinto. Here, Northfield Township. Bridget Kassman is absent with notice. Babysitter issues. Matt Ritz. Here at Royal Oak, Michigan. Jack Seacrest. Here, Nala Road, Northfield Township. Ken Dignan. Oh, president, Northfield Township, Washington County, Michigan. And Barb Griffith, President, uh, Northfield Township, Washington County. Um, do we have Cecilia tonight? They have a meeting, I think, tonight, don't they? Yes. Planning Commission. Okay. Am I looking at, because I'm looking at Anne's screen? Yeah. I know. I don't know what's happening. It's being funky dunky here. Sharing your screen with us? Okay. I don't, I, I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> well, we definitely have a quorum. Um, do we have any members of the public that you can see, Ken? Yes, there are members of the public. Okay. Do you want me to stop you sharing or? Who, me? You're sharing your screen. I don't even know what's happening. I'm trying to get back to normal. Go to stop. Uh, let's go to screen sharing and stop. Stop video? Nope. That's Sam's oh. face. <laughs> Sam's face. <laughs> Look at that face. Get out. Uh, okay. Here, we'll do it. There we go. There? Yay. All right. Go. Sorry, guys. We do have members of the public. I guess if anyone from the public would like to speak, please raise your hand and we will unmute you and let you speak. Uh, Miss Dolling, hang on. Trying to unmute you, Kristen. There you go. Thank you, Ben. There. Yeah, all right. Now <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Just want to introduce myself. My name is Kristen Delaney, uh, uh, formerly of Bobber Down Bar and Grill, um, which we sold. And we just recently purchased another building in the DDA, um, 9419 Main Street, which was the original post office. And we're going to be doing a little uh, renovation on that building and looking for some other places to invest in downtown. So just wanted to get in the habit of attending DDA meetings and introduce myself. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. That's awesome. Anyone else, Ken, that you can see? Uh, no one else with their hand raised uh, at this time. Okay. Thank you. Um, yep. That was our call to the public. Um, the next item is the financial report by our treasurer, um, Mr. Sechrist. Our finances have remained substantially the same since last month we have a total of thirty three thousand eight hundred and thirty seven dollars approximately uh increased by sixteen dollars over last month um as i understand it we have several things uh, i think we owe a reimbursement to dana which we haven't done yet uh she hasn't put anything in that i know about and i have a, a check for the bench boards which i will take with me around the middle of the month when I go up and pick those up over in uh, on the other side of Lansing. So that'll drop us down about $1,100 when that happens. But otherwise, pretty straightforward. There's uh, not much coming in and not much going out at this point. So uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Is there a motion to accept the treasurer's report? So move. Make a motion. Doug, uh, 
um, made the motion and seconded the motion. How's that? And I went up. Doug Wilbur and I went up. Um, discussion on the motion? Hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Thank you, Jack. Um, the next item on the agenda is the minutes from January 27th, 2021. Uh, we've had those for a while since um, January 27th, 2021. Uh, I'll move approval without with uh, dispensing of the me of the reading. Report. Uh, deja vu. It's uh, Seacrest making the motion to um, approve the minutes from January 27th and um, Dignan supporting it. Um, discussion on the motion. Hearing none, those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Uh, the next item on the agenda, um, old business, uh, the bench project. Um, Mr. Seacrest has kept us pretty informed on that. But you wanna just put something on the record, Jack? Yes, we, we um, the arrangements are, uh, we ordered the bench boards from Poly Products, uh, recycled materials, we'll get them uh, in a uh, wood color. Uh, I will pick them up about the middle of March and bring them back and store them until Kiwanis is ready to do the drilling and install them in place of the boards we have currently. And I don't know, maybe that'll be in April or something like that. So. Thank you, Jack. Um, the next item on the agenda is, is community relations, Johnny. Yes, so been in communication with Jen Taylor at the Whitmore Lake High School, and we are going to collaborate on um, doing a uh, social media campaign of our local businesses, mainly just to inform and um, celebrate our local businesses. So local high school students will be interviewing these local business owners and sharing that information with the Community Relations Committee, and then we will create social media posts to put out on our different channels. Any questions for Jenny? No? Thank you very much for doing that. Um, the next item on the agenda is redevelopment ready community status. Um, Mr. Dignan? Well, as we were talking about that, that's actually going to be on the agenda um, where uh, planning commissioners have asked about, uh, I think I mentioned at our short meeting yeah, uh, about whether or not they would be compensated uh, it's not something I'm in favor of uh, for taking the uh, educational coursework. The educational coursework uh, is eight hours of coursework. And uh, as Barbara alluded to last time, uh, you know, you're going to stop and take notes. There are tests along the way. Uh, it's a great, great program to, to get into. Uh, really kind of allows everybody to be on the same page when you're uh, uh, moving down this road. Uh, as I mentioned before, McKenna has been essentially operating under the premise of this for the last few years in everything that they've developed and created. So all of the heavy lifting documents, the master plan documents, the parks and rec plan, uh, all, all of those documents are uh, in line with uh, redevelopment ready communities uh, uh, kind of programming. Uh, the, the changes that are going to be made and adjustments to all of the documents that are needed for anyone coming into the community are aligned with that. Uh, and they're just getting ready to kind of dig into the meat and potatoes of those documents and make sure that they are. Uh, you know, we're going to continue to try to encourage board members uh, on the township board, uh, members of the planning commission, members of the ZBA. Uh, any of you that would like to, we can connect you with uh, the resource on how to take the course. Myself and Dr. Griffith have completed the coursework um, in the community. And not everybody has to be certified to start down this path. But once we get to a certain point, there becomes a point where you have to have the enough people, at least a person on every board that is... Uh, redevelopment ready certified. Well, I'll certainly volunteer to be one of those people that takes the course. Great, Jack. 
All right. Yeah, we'll send it out to uh, the, the DDA members uh, on, on how to register. And if you have any technical or, or uh, questions about it, feel free to reach out to myself. Uh, I'm happy to help with that. Thank you, Ken. We'll keep that on the agenda all the time. Sure. Um, the next item on the agenda is the attorney search. Um, in our January meeting, I accepted the challenge of um, getting some, going down the legal path um, for the DDA to determine the legality of our district um, as some concerns were brought up by um, at least one attorney um, working for the township. And I put out feelers and I got inundated. I could not keep up with all the emails and phone calls I got. The Michigan Economic Development Council, the Michigan Townships Association, Michigan Downtown Association, and three D different DDAs. Mother. And they all pretty much led me to an attorney in Ann Arbor who is also the attorney for the Ann Arbor DDA. He's Base. I mean, there are a lot of attorneys that work with um, municipalities and this type of thing, but this man seems to be the one that a lot of DDAs use and have been very pleased with him. And I've spoken with him twice um, at no charge. <laughs> and um, this is what I'd like, like us to do um, is uh, the, the attorney's name is Jerry Lax. LAX, um, and he's in Ann Arbor, a group with lots of different names associated with it. I can get, I'll, I can give them all to you, but, um, but several DDAs referred me to him, and um, then I, we are, I sent them the DDA district map. He wanted to look at first. He had to be sure that nobody in his law firm has any conflict with us, and that this has all been done for free so far. And there is there are no conflicts helping us with this in their firm. Um, we sent them the um, PDF of our DDA map, um, and basically, attorneys. All of the attorneys I spoke with were three hundred dollars an hour if we go ahead and engage with them. Um, I thought that if we went with the man who's the D attorney for a lot of DDAs, that maybe there would be fewer hours involved. Uh, and my recommendation is that we go with him. Um, he's, this is what he does. Um, and I've asked, he, first of all, he did tell me there in the DDA Enabling Act, there, is, there are no shapes that are unpermitted. So the shape of our district is not probably going to be the concern. It's just that there's the discrepancy between the legal description and the map. Um, I've asked Mr. Fink, who is the township attorney, to give me a list of what, their, what the concerns could be um, with the DDA district. And I've not gotten a reply from him. Did he indicate that he would provide uh, that information to you? No, I haven't gotten any reply at all. Um, and that's what I need to know. It's going to save a lot of time if I can get a reply from Mr. Fink as to what the concerns are with the township, with the DDA district, it if I could give Mr. Lax a list. So, Ken, does that request of Mr. Fink need to come through you? Um, working on it right this minute trying to figure out why that wasn't responded to. Cause that, that was over a week ago, wasn't it? Oh yeah, well over a week ago. So um, okay. the recommendation is to go with Mr. Lax on this. I think we can do it most expeditiously um, and get some black and white answers for us. Well, as, as Doug and I and others have said, we need to have a concrete base that we that we believe is accurate, which takes into account all the things that have gone on over all these years. And of course, then we give that to Mr. Monchak, right? And we get the actual numbers from him. But, but uh, if, this, if this moves us in that direction, then I certainly support using Mr. Lax. I'd like to make a motion to 
put together a $4,500 attorney budget and that we entertain Mr. Lex as our attorney for this. Would someone like to support the motion? Ann? Uh, support. Go ahead, Ann. Yes, support. Um, motion by Mr. Wilbur, supported by Ms. Iaquinto to uh, a lot, $4,500 toward legal fees to Mr. Lax to help us um, determine the legality of the DDA district. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay, discussion on the motion? Do we have any sense that that's enough money? I picked 15 hours is how I came up with the number. It's at least a start. We can always review it later if we need to, right? Correct. I can, yeah, I can relay to him that that's what we've agreed on and that's what our budget is, if that's how we decide to go. And then Ken had mentioned that perhaps the township could help us out um, financially on this too. I think it's uh, only prudent that we do. Uh, certainly it's at the board's discretion, but I certainly feel like I could advocate for that support. A 50-50 sharing maybe or something like that? Or? Yeah. Mr. Lax, was that LAX? Uh, LAX, Jerry Lax. Um, I can give you the whole um, no, I don't offer. Need okay. Mr. Fink, Mr. Fink will be in touch with you tomorrow. Um, he know they know each other. Yeah, Mr. Fink will be in touch with you tomorrow. Thank you, Ken. So, okay, um, is there any further discussion on that motion? No, okay. Um, those in favor, or do you want it, the motion reread? Anybody? Um, those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed say nay. Okay, thank you guys. Well, I'll keep the ball rolling on this. Um, Thank you. And I always, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I was just, um, like I said, between phone calls and emails and text messages and stuff, they replied to me on Sundays um, about it. it. They were all very, very good. Um, and with Max and Mr. Fink knowing each other uh, pretty well, I think uh, that'll be helpful to us and beneficial to us in working through this process. Okay, thank you. Um, I always keep village plans on the agenda because that was kind of our baby. Um, and, and we always like to know what, what's going on with that. Sure, sure. Um, well, there's uh, on our agenda, we're going to be taking up the RFP for the North, uh, Northfield Community Park Planning and Design Services. Uh, as part of the preparation for that, there were some very old um, uh, kind of uh, plans in there that included townhomes and things of that sort that are no longer on the table. Uh, our planners did pull together uh, a conceptual discussion uh, bubble map, which I'm sharing with you right now. And as you can see, um, what it's done is it's delineated the township's designation of a minimum of 10 acres and a maximum of 12 for a park. And then uh, the, the other area here is designated for potential other development down the road. Um, certainly, uh, there was a, a discussion and Livonia Builders does still have an interest in putting single family homes on part of this. They are not interested in this commercial piece here. Um, and they are looking at an ingress egress around this area and then an ingress egress next to the post office. So um, this is gonna be on our board discussion for our next board meeting. Uh, and uh, I'm sure, uh, and for possible inclusion in the, uh, the, the uh, RFP for a park planner and designer. So, uh, that's kind of where we stand with North Village at this point. Um, anybody have any questions about that? Sure, Jack. Can you, um, I'll say, review for us the situation with Al Dente and the possibility of them purchasing a little bit of that land? Sure, sure. Um, well, there's, there's two things, um, and... Uh, 
I spoke with Dennis uh, late last week and uh, some things changed significantly in the cost. Uh, as you may or may not know, the sewer does go down his south uh, property line, north property line and west property line. So he is surrounded by sewer, which makes it complicated. Um, we talked to Dennis and, uh, you know, a sewer uh, diversion and is possible. Uh, it's not nearly as costly as we had initially anticipated. Uh, so uh, triggering that discussion, it piqued his interest again. He's considering his options. Uh, the board was open to looking at possibly selling that to him but he's also uh, considering property to the north of him. So uh, we'll, we'll just have to see how that goes. It's really the balls in his court at this point in time, but uh, it was encouraging to know that uh, the, the costs were not as prohibitive as we had thought they would be. So I'm, 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 you know, we have an open line of communication. Um, you know, I told him I, I, I'm keeping my ear to the ground and anytime there's something that might be beneficial to keeping a great brand like that in our community, we want to do it. So. Thank you. Any other? Yep. Thank you. Um, uh, the next item is orientation packet. Um, that's actually more homework for me that I haven't been able to work too much on. Um, it is something that each board and commission does need to do, and I will, it's definitely on in my stack of things to do. Um, there, it's quite involved. Orientation packets for these boards are not just a couple pieces of paper. They're very, very involved. So um, I have all the information of what I have to start working on with it, and I'll let you all know if I need help with things. But I just wanted to get the legal thing out of the way first. Um, and then we have supervisor's report, if you have anything else, Ken. Sure. Uh, well, there are a couple things. Um, here, we, uh, uh, the township board uh, will be going down the road of defining uh, what the role of a chief executive in the township is going to look like uh, down the road. We're going to be working with our um, uh, labor council on that and potentially going uh, out and uh, looking for that individual. We also are um, going to looking at doing some training with the planning commission and ZBA. Uh, and uh, let's see what else was there. And, uh, and, and just watch in the absence of the township manager at this point, uh, the, the board is kind of dividing up all those duties and stuff. We may take some, uh, you may see some further direction on that at our next meeting, but we're really trying to uh, share the responsibilities as much as we can, uh, you know, and, and trying to make it as smooth as possible. The staff has been absolutely amazing. I got to tell you, uh, the staff in the office is, uh, well, we've had a few, few hiccups and snags with the Zoom, uh, they're really trying to pick up the slack everywhere they possibly can. So I'm, I'm just really happy to have such a great team. So uh, there is one more thing I'll, I'll kind of share. And uh, th this, this uh, is something more school wise, but uh, the school district uh, along with myself uh, have been working on, on this. This is a uh, eight and a half by 11. It, uh, kind of folds in half and and it has you know basically an introductory letter talking about what we are because we're very different than the, all the school districts we're, we're uh the whitmore lake school district is is very uh, very different in a lot of ways and uh, this is a draft of it it's not the final but it talks about the things that really are going to be the appealing factor to uh, families coming here and even businesses coming here. You know, um, there's, there's a lot of things that people don't know about our district, you know, and the, and the actions that our board's taken to or the, our board. I should say our board because it's all of our board. Um, but, you know, they, uh, uh, it's really 
fundamentally different than it was uh, in the past. And uh, I think we need something like this. We need something like this. So when I'm talking to people, I can say, hey, look at this. Look at this. Is, this is the district that you're thinking about moving your business to, or this is the district you're thinking about building homes in. Um, you know, once this is uh, of a more shareable form, I'll, I'll, I'll get it to you guys and, and you'll be able to see it. Um, you know, we have been in class uh, from the very beginning of COVID and we've remained in class and it has been phenomenal for our kids. Um, you know, and we've got one of the lowest student to teacher ratios around 15 to one. So a, a lot of really good things there to share. And, uh, you know, of course, if you guys ever have questions and if, if any of you have not been through the schools uh, or seen the stuff that they're doing, uh, let me know. Tom and Tom DeKaiser and myself would be more than happy to walk you through, show you some of the things we've got going on and uh, really show you the gem that is our amazing uh, little school district here. So uh, that's all I have. Yeah, Jenny. I would just love to offer uh, both a response and, and maybe a suggestion. Thank you so much for that flyer. I love it. I think it's, I can see it's practical use so much. Um, all my girls are in Whitmore Lake schools. We've had such a terrific experience already. Um, we've had families who have joined Whitmore Lake schools this year because their communities, they live out of district, were virtual. And so they called me up and said, what do you have to say about Whitmore Lake? And so I just, I love the application for of this flyer. Um, I have brought this up with the PTO before, and I think they're interested, but they just don't know what to do do, but so maybe there's a role here for DDA as well. But um, my sister is a realtor out in Grand Rapids. And one of the things that she recommended that was so helpful for her was schools doing an open house and providing content like what you've got on this flyer so that realtors have the language to share with potential home buyers or families that are looking to join the community. Um, and I think now that you've created this flyer, that gives the talking points, right? We've done meet and greets. We did one successful meet and greet with the DDA before with businesses. And I, I know we'd all really like to get back to that, but I, I would hope that maybe there's an opportunity to combine our, our business meet and greet, maybe with the PTO or get realtors in the area on board, um, just so that they're hearing this directly from us, right? The ones that, that live here. And so I, again, I just really thank you for the flyer. I think it's awesome. Absolutely. A couple things on that real quick, and then I'll go to Jack. So um, I've been meeting with realtors over the past uh, four weeks, five weeks or so, uh, trying to bring them in. Uh, one of the things that uh, was a goal of mine uh, when I became supervisor is to have a quarterly business summit. And what that is, is that's, that's a business summit for Whitmore Lake area businesses. And uh, the realtors are a perfect example, but bringing in the community leaders, the state reps, the county commissioners, the, you know, uh, those kind of folks, as well as the school leaders and uh, having them to be able to speak and maybe cover something like this flyer to the business community, to the realtor community, um, you know, just a quick hour long, this is a quick uh, lunch thing. Come on in, hear about what's going on. Uh, we can talk about projects that the, the DDA would like to undertake and, and paint a vision, right? It's really about the attitude. Uh, when we get the attitude changed and we start speaking more, we start, start speaking into the community, the positive things and the good things and the great things about the community, that's when it gets, uh, it gets really... Uh, contagious. People get excited about it. We watched it happen over the course of five years at the school and, um, you know, it is transformative. So thank you, Jenny. Jack? Uh, over, over time, I'll say, uh, various uh, external impressions of the Whitmore Lake School schools have, have come to our attention in terms of weaknesses of one sort or another. It seems to me important that this flyer deal up front with those weaknesses in a positive way in whatever way it can. I, maybe it does that, I don't know because you know I haven't studied and I don't know, but I feel like we, we can't ignore the external impressions and we have to deal with those head on to, to uh, I think to get the best result. 
I, I, you're absolutely right. The, the company that works with us at the, with them at the school is XDS. They're a company out of Brighton. They're a phenomenal marketing company. They have done uh, tens of thousands of dollars of free consulting for us. And uh, we really faced, when I was on the board, head on understanding what those external impressions were and fixing them if they're true accepting the fact that some may have been true and how do you deal with those? And then what do you, you know, what, what do you present uh, that count that counters that to, or shows in evidence that it's different? Um, you know, I mean, our kids go to the finest of educational institutions across the country and that was a misconception that they couldn't get in. That's not the case at all. We, we uh, you know, and, and it addresses that. So absolutely, you're 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 100 right, and uh, it's why I've stayed engaged in this process of getting this together, because Tom and I talked, and the board, uh, their board, felt that um, together we had a really good understanding. Tom and I of what we were trying, what what we were trying to accomplish with this. You know, what what are we trying to get across with this flyer? And uh, I, th I think this is real close, real close. So, but thanks for sharing. So I have, I have another thought. So one of the things that we've excelled at as a DDA is putting on community events. Um, and I just wonder this notion of how do we support our schools and this image of our schools. It's been so exciting to see like the decorations downtown of our businesses. And I remember when the bowling alley was kind of going through a, tra a possible transition of owners. Um, they started putting things up on their marquee about like upcoming football games and, and just generating that excitement, you know? And I wonder if maybe this is our role as DDA of how can we provide uh, marketing materials, that kind of school spirit stuff that we can line our main street with um, just to again, build back that sense of pride. And, and, you know, it's not just for us as a town, but the students, right. They'll get excited to see that too. We've, we, we decorate, right? That's what our DDA has been focused on. So I don't know how that would work or if that's something we'd want to talk to business owners about. Yeah, I, I think uh, one of the things that uh, is, is important is um, the, the relationship that exists between the community and the school, the relationship that exists between the business community and the school. Um, because it's about sharing the love, right? When you, when you say, Hey, you know, we're here for you. We're supportive of you. And, and really with these kids, these kids have been so torn by this, this pandemic over the last year and a half. Um, you know, graduation last year was done in a very different way because of COVID. Um, but there was a parade through town. And, and if our businesses can come together and rally and support these kids, when that stuff is going on, um, you know, these kids may not have a prom this year and with Whitmore Lake, that's two, that's your juniors and your seniors, right? They, they, they miss, they'll miss out. Um, I don't know what they're going to do, but to, to have an openness to say, Hey, um, you know, we, as a DDA have a direct line to our business community. It's just, how can we support it? I mean, obviously it's not core to our mission of what we're there for, but if it's certainly a way to, uh, to garner a, a deeper relationship between the entities in our in our town, two very important entities in our town. So, thanks, Jenny. Doug? I have a question. Yeah, can we create an avenue uh, for the DDA to continue to work through? So it's almost I don't know if it's a mission statement or if it's some sort of avenue uh, between the school. And the businesses through the through the DDA. Oh, I, I think we could certainly have a conversation about it with with, with the proper people there. Um, you know, Maria Carter Ewald uh, and Tom are the two people that I would sit down with and have a conversation, you know, um, or have a Zoom with. Um, yeah. Well, I'm kind of uh, thinking of some sort of uh, you know, sort of looking back through our. Uh, uh, our plan, but um, creating even something that's on our agenda as well about our relationship with the schools in some fashion that we every month talk about. 
So, you know, we're involved with this or that. So that's like the avenue that's always open for us to communicate about it. That would be well, what, your committee, right? Would be the instrument for that, maybe. I think so. And, and you know, one of the things I like to remind people of is um, uh, where we live uh, is in Northfield Township. But the sense of community is really the physical body of water that's behind me and the school system. So Whitmore Lake is the identity of the community. It, it, it really is. And um, Northfield Township and, and I'll say Green Oak and Hamburg Townships are the, the, the physical places we live within the Whitmore Lake community. So it's, uh, you know, it, it is something that, um, how, how you manage that and when you talk people through it, I think it, it really helps them to understand, okay, you know, what, what are the different instruments of government and why are they there and how can they help and how can they work together? And, you know, School is such an easy avenue and it's such a communication tool for us as a DDA to communicate with a great number of people. And, and let's face it, if you're the third house down on North Shore or the fifth house down on North Shore, you're a part of the community. Just because the Green Oak line goes between your house and the house next to yours, you're, you're part of this, you're part of this, this community. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's always been a hard thing. You know, you look across the lake. We used to not be able to call there because it was long distance, <laughs> you know, and now, I mean, but, but no, and, and, and but today it, it's uh, one of those things that I think the uh, Green Oak folks feel a little slighted on sometimes. Just well, to be conscious nice of to make it a strength instead of a weakness somehow. Absolutely. For sure. And that, For sure. Those are all key elements you just hit on uh, that have, been sort of uh, skirted around uh, over time and I agree 100 percent on the Whitmore Lake schools and Whitmore Lake mailing address and Whitmore Lake is our central hub uh, with Hamburg Township, Green Oak Township and so on. Yep. Great. So yeah, Jenny and I can continue to work. I, I, I'm happy to help in any way. Obviously, I have a neat, unique uh, relationship with the school district, uh, with my past there, and uh, I know that they uh, there's a there's an innate desire there to strengthen that relationship, and uh, I really think uh, the DDA may be one of the mechanisms that help to do that. Is, is there an online avenue we can connect the two? like a website or something that, you know, we could focus on, you know, a sporting event one week or, you know, events going on with the school and, you know, a business could, you know, businesses could chip in and somehow connect the two. So there's a central location that everybody can go and find these events and, and kind of just rally the support that way. And then events will grow from that. That, that it's a, a great thought. I hadn't thought of it in this context we are trying to do that the school's trying to do that with the township the community center the library and all that for other types of events but i hadn't thought about how the dda could be looped into that so i uh, appreciate that matt and uh we'll definitely keep that as on the forefront too as part of that uh comprehensive community activities thing. so appreciate it all right, I've taken up enough DDA time. <laughs> no, sorry. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, the next item is a Parks and Rec report by Doug Wilbur. Okay, so our five-year plan, um, we um, voted at the last meeting to present that and uh, uh, approve that and move forward with that. Um, as our mission statement for the Parks and Rec. Also, um, we've put a committee together to start the design phase um, of the new park on uh, Main Street. So there's activity moving forward in the development phases 
I believe along with what Ken was talking about um, as far as the area of land to work with and uh, start um, the design phases of that. The bark park's doing good. Uh, the garden is just waiting for spring to get here. We have plans to put some elevated gardens in there as well as uh, take out some of the wood structures uh, for each garden and replace those with a, a galvanized uh, boxed area. And signage is all on uh, our process over the next two months. And that's about it. Thank you, Doug. I do have one thing to add to Doug's, and uh, you may not, may not know, we were having some trouble with filing that plan with the DNR and getting into the grant territory and all that. All of that's been resolved. We got all the information in and it all got accepted. We had a meeting this afternoon with the DNR uh, grant coordinator. Uh, and we had, she gave us an hour of her time to uh, help uh, myself and, and Jackie Otto and several others understand the grant process. Uh, my only concern on that grant process is if we were to, if, every, if everything was to align and we were to get all our ducks in a row and we were able to meet the April 1st deadline and we got our grant, the, there would not be a piece of dirt moved until 2023 under the grant program. So, um, I, as one board member, feel like uh, we need to move faster than that on some stuff. But the nice thing is, is we can designate our DNR grant applications to very specific things. And uh, so we may have to do some uh, pathway stuff on our own. And that's not, even though it's grant qualified, we can't wait two to three years to start putting structures in that part. We can't wait two to three years to connect to the, uh, Lakeland Trail. Uh, we Some of that stuff is going to have to move forward uh, and at, at the, you know, drive of the Parks and Rec Commission and the uh, Township Board. So, but it was a very good meeting with the DNR and I think that we will be able to get lots of, we will be able to get grant money, but uh, just understanding their process, it's a very slow process and they expect you to have a three to five year grant cycle where you're enhancing and, and, and refining your grants every year as you get grants for certain things. So, and well, they I'm do look- to help out. I, I have a lot of experience with grants. If you need some help reviewing or whatever you might need, I, I'm happy to help out. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, I would connect with Doug and Jackie Otto on that because uh, I know Parks and Rec is gonna be working their tails off on it. Yeah, there was uh, one other comment about um, a bond. Uh, we may need to consider a bond um, or start thinking about a bond to kind of kick this uh, off as well. Just kind of planting a seed there. There's been discussion among some of the board. Uh, you know, money is really inexpensive right now. Mm -hmm. Money is inexpensive to borrow right now. And... Uh, we, we do have some latitude and ability to do so. We have some, we have the public safety building that's gonna be paid for here in the next year. And uh, it, it may require some of that. So uh, I can tell you right now that the DNR stuff, uh, they're looking for at least a 25% match. match. So if you wanna do a $400,000 project, you need to have $100,000 available to match. Um, you know, so uh, that, that, that's, uh, there are some of those things, Doug, and some capital improvement stuff that the, that the board's looking at, and uh, that may have to be a route that we look to go down. So, thanks. Barb, I, can I give a brief library report whenever you have a minute to let me do that? Yeah, this would be a good time for that. Okay, go right. all right, so the library, uh, board meets in, I don't know, another week or so, but anyhow, a few things. Number one, the basement of the library has, uh, I'll say, been a flood zone for many, many years, and we're spending, going to be spending some money to, to uh, dry out the basement and make it uh, 
uh, more suitable for appropriate storage and so forth, that's going to cost a decent amount of money. The library is going to be doing some more landscaping outside next to the pavilion and in the uh, uh, drainage area so that it all, all looks, looks much, much better. We're getting, we have bids on those things. Uh, number three, we are, we are moving forward on a, on an electronic sign that will replace the sign that's out in front of the library now so that we can do messages of various types, not just library things, but community things as well, if they're appropriate to be put on there. And we're looking at designs for that as well. Uh, so that's moving forward. And I know, uh, Ken, talking to you, that the uh, board is thinking about a couple other places for those. That, uh, and uh, we stand ready to join with you as appropriate in that in, in that direction. But we're, we want to move and get things done for ours. I don't know if the timing matches you or not. You'll have to let us know that. <clears throat> and um, let's see, the last thing... Uh, I had one more thing that I wanted to mention. Hmm. I don't know what it was, but if I come up with it, I'll, I'll raise my hand again. <laughs> but anyhow, we're, we're moving forward. Oh, I know what it was. Uh, the other thing I, I, that Ken mentioned when we talked the other day was historical markers for around the, the uh, uh, township and around the Whitmore Lake, I would bet that the library would be willing to be the uh, uh, first place to go ahead and try to do that, Ken, if, if that's of interest to you. I think we can afford to do it uh, if I get the library board to approve it. And I know of at least one company that we could go through to get such signs. Maybe there are plenty of others, but I know of one. I just bumped into them last week. So I have a place to at least begin that process if we decide to go forward. But we want them all to be uh, the same, right? They need to look the same, be the same, et cetera. So, but anyhow, I wanted to plant the seed that, that the library is ready to roll. If, if you want to get things started, we'd like to be the first. That's wonderful. That, that, that's a great thing. Uh, I know myself as, as uh, a future property owner, uh, I, I intend to do that for 9615 Main Street. Uh, the, the, the Halleck house here. And, um, you know, I know I've, I've talked to Matt about it before too, in the past. I mean, you know, just identifying these uh, buildings, giving people something to walk around and read and learn about, try to place themselves back there. And whether it be 1850 or, or 1912 or whatever, you know, all the different uh, rich history here. So I, I think that's wonderful, Jack. I look forward to it. Um, I, you know, if we definitely, if, if you've got a company in mind, you know, we want to put these out there that are long lasting, uh, that can have a, maybe a, a historical etched drawing or etched in a uh, picture of the buildings that maybe the way they were when they uh, were in their heyday. Uh, that's kind of the, uh, the idea. And uh, once, once we have a format, then we can, we can proceed. Yep. And uh, I know that we'd be willing to participate too. I know. Uh, reading on the Facebook post the other day about all the information regarding our building. So we'd love to put yeah. some on it. That, that's awesome. And, and Jack, on the sign front, I, I did speak to uh, the librarian. We, uh, we had a conversation. Brownie Sign, if you didn't know it, uh, the owner of Brownie Sign is a resident of Northfield Township. Uh, so uh, I said, hey, why not, you know, we'll fire by them, see what they do too. Um, uh, yeah, we'd love to have those, uh, you know, we'd love to have a few of those uh, signs that we could put messages on too, maybe on North Territorial at the fire station, uh, maybe at the fire station, uh, or you know, at the public safety building, and maybe at the community center. So, so you're saying Brownie's sign would does what kind of signs? Every kind, they, they do everything. Yeah, okay, so they do. Yep, uh, those light, those uh, messaging signs, everything you can think of, they do. Um, but specifically, I was speaking about the messaging signs that you were mentioning. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know, he's in Northfield. You know, he's in Northfield Township. Of course, I I am a huge advocate of working with businesses and people who are within our township, if if we can, and if you know, obviously it's got to be uh, competitive. But I, I've watched him come over to a few business owners here in town. Uh, you know, one evening at 7.30 because he was at his house and 
heard that the lights weren't coming on. So he came over and just, you know, readjusted something because, you know, it's in his backyard. It's, 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 this is his home. So, yeah. Does Zaley have his name? Do you know, or? I I gave her everything. Okay. Great. So. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, I don't have anything under new business right now. Um, we're kind of taking care of a lot of old business. Um, so the next item on the agenda is board member comments. Um, let's go start uh, with Doug Wilbur. Um, I don't have any comment other than I know that we've had our ice fishermen on the lake and the I'm just assuming there were some comments about the condition of the uh, area there. Um, I know at the next meeting, I plan on uh, suggesting that uh, we do some grading and reseeding there. Um, But I think it's been great that we've seen activity there uh, this winter. And that's about it. Thank you. Jenny Olney. Yeah, I just wanted to um, say thank you, Barb, for all your work in tracking down this attorney. I Again, this is something we've talked about for a while, and I just really appreciate the time that you put into uh, talking to so many different people to get his information and looking forward to this moving forward. Jack, I didn't thank you last time um, about purchasing the benches. Again, a conversation we've been having for multiple years. And so thank you for uh, being the executor on that and making that happen. Um I wanted to ask about the play path, um, the um, here on Barker, the Barker Road play path. So the snow removal of that path has has sadly um, scraped up all of the paint. And so all the fun designs that we had there are really no longer there. And just wondering if there is a plan to repaint the spring, hopefully. I hope so. An interesting question. I had, I did not know that that was the case. Yeah, they're almost all gone. So let's look into that because I would really love to see that (laughs) happen again. We put a lot of work into that and I think we have the stencils, but um, yeah, the the path, the the sidewalk itself is really busted up from from the plow. Is the sidewalk busted too or just the... I mean, is there damage to the? There, there isn't damage to the sidewalk. You can just see minimal, like like light scraping, but the paint's all gone. Okay. That might affect the type of paint that's put back on it next time. There's probably something more durable. This was supposed to be, I mean, this was provided, we had to buy it specifically through the company because it was supposed to withstand I don't know that it was supposed to withstand scraping. Yeah. Uh, that would be, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know what you're going to find that would, but uh, yeah. I yeah, mean, it is sad. Um, it might have been fine for a brush or something to that effect, but, uh, you know. Um, again, you know, it's the pickup truck they use. It's a big heavy duty pickup truck, the same one they use on the road. And before that, there used to be something on a four wheeler with a small plow that would would maintain that area for a pathway to town. And that would probably be a lot easier on that painted material. If we could go back to something like that. Well, and the question is, is, uh... You know, when you're contracting it out versus having staff to do it, as we get more assets that are under our control and care, um, we as a township are really going to need to look at a staff, one or two staff members that are probably going to be part of uh, a DPW that we would put our wastewater treatment plan under. Uh, You know, get these guys the, you know, some of the equipment they need. uh, You know, they've got those... uh, uh, not even four wheelers, but the, the quad type vehicles that have the big brush on them that, that don't damage. They just brush the snow off. And, you know, uh, I, I really think we could keep one or two, one guy uh, or one and a half guys busy enough in this township between, you know, in the summer, emptying garbage cans one, you know, a couple times, 
you know, maybe every other day, even depending on how busy the township is, right, as we bring people down here. Uh, but the dealing with the sidewalk maintenance and dealing with, uh, you know, uh, we have a community center parking lot that uh, our plow contractors are uh, not willing to plow because it's uh, a, a gravel lot on top of a, a grid. Uh, so we, we got things like that, challenges we've created and, and challenges we haven't created that will eventually have to be dealt with. And whether or not that's through our own uh, staff that can take better care and ownership in the process, uh, we might have to do that. So. Well, thank you. I appreciate where that's headed. Um, I think that could be really useful for the township. And yeah, I just wanted to say I'm sad that the paint is gone and hope we can do something about that. Um, also, uh, I just wanted to say thank you to Kristen for joining tonight. And um, I look forward to your potential new tenant. <laughs> uh, also, lastly, I'm really glad that we're moving forward with uh, submissions and RFP for park design in that area. Um, really hope that they can maximize on the the amount of space that they're provided and also focus on the amenities that have been, you know, brought up before that the town uh, desire. So thank you all for your work on that. Um, before we go on, can I, we did have someone with their hand up. Um, is that gone now? There was uh, something. Let me see here. Cause there was a question in the, uh, and I, I did we kind of answered it. It was from Adam. He had a question. He said that in the past they had used a brush, uh, but this is a full full plow and truck. And uh, you know, the the plow contract is out on the agenda for the next board meeting. So this is very timely. Um, you know, very timely. Um, you know, Jenny, did you notice that that was scraped off? Oh, oh yeah, we've seen it. I mean it. You could see where it was like faded. It looked almost faded. And then over the course of the winter and each time they've come through, it's just gotten worse and worse. And now much of it's gone. Okay. Yeah. If you, if you, Adam would send me a note on that saying mm -hmm. that you've noticed it and that it was a full size plow truck plowing. Um, oh yeah. And helpful. the truck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be very helpful. Um, you know, we had staff and volunteers putting in countless hours into that work, uh, and, and it's, that, that's a darn shame. Um, yeah, just something about this town and murals. We can't seem to keep them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> um, Anna Quinto. Hello. Um, so um, I am happy to hear the school and the DDA kind of working together. I was on the school board for 11 years. Um, I have a lot of connection with a lot of teachers that are still around and happy to help out. I know Jen Taylor very well, and um, she's really great. Uh, Dee's used to, I think I mentioned before, Dee's used to work um, with uh, the middle school. I think it was uh, sixth grade um, on a project, an advertising project. And that was because they were stumped with what to do. I heard through um, uh, a board meeting. So I approached the teacher and we worked for several years. And now I work outside of the house and, uh, or the business and, uh, and teachers kind of moved around and such. So we don't do that ice cream project anymore, but, um, if there's anything I can help with on that manner and, um, just, I'm happy that the DDA is working in forward motion now, I feel. <laughs> and um, yeah, wherever I can help. So yay for everybody. <laughs> Matt Ritz, do you have anything to add? Uh, you know, the only thing I would say is, you know, with these new businesses coming in, this is the time to instill the spirit of Whitmore Lake and everything else. Obviously, you know, I'm on this board and I can understand what's trying to be portrayed, but uh, you know, we really need to get to these guys coming in and, and just trying to get the spirit going with everything and the downtown activities and sure they'll be more than willing to, you know, help with any, anything that we're trying to do. So I think it's just getting to them early while they're, you know, getting open and, you know, they're going to be excited about being a part of the town. We obviously want to portray a good image of our businesses and everything else. So 
I think um, I think the time to do that is is when they're getting ready to open, and you know maybe I can help with that. And I know my groups talk to the other couple of businesses coming in, so everybody's kind of on board, I, I would say. So you know when there's events and stuff, I, you know we we would love to help out, and we want to be part of this town and, and make it better. So thank you, Matt. Um, Jack Seacrest. I'll just say that if the DDA can move forward all of the things we've been talking about tonight, then uh, the DDA will be a, an important factor in an exciting future for the Whitmore Lake area. And I look forward to seeing that happen. Thank you. Um, Ken Dignan, do you have anything else? Put a lot tonight. Um, just, you know, Matt, thanks a lot. Uh, appreciate that. We, we definitely welcome you and, and, and appreciate, you know, your commitment. Uh, I did notice, and, and I don't know if any of you did, the uh, building next to, um, uh, I'll call it Little Porky's. I can't think what it's called right now. Um, but the building next to it where the uh, attorney's office is, there's a hobby shop going in there. Uh, I saw that today. I saw the sign go up in the window for a hobby shop. That's an interesting thing. I'm not sure if it's going to be... Uh, I'm not sure what that's going to turn into yet, but they're clearly working hard at that. And uh, I know uh, the other new businesses coming to town, those that I've spoke to are very excited about being part of a vibrant uh, community that is, that is, you know, just alive and, and activity downtown is buzzing. And I can't wait for there to be tons of people uh, coming down here, enjoying things and uh, supporting our businesses. Well, it suggests we should have another meet and greet uh, with including all these people that are new. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We'll get rid of this virus that's going around and we'll do that. Um, anything else, Ken? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Um, when there was talk about realtors, you mentioned realtors, and it reminded me, Jenny, of when. Dana invited those two realtors to our DDA and they were going to keep us informed on a, it was going to be a monthly or quarterly basis, what the status is of business um, properties in our town, ones that are available, ones that have sold, ones that, are, and do you know anything, Jenny, about where those ladies have gone? No, I completely forgot about that because that was pre-COVID times, right? So I think that's a great uh idea and suggestion to bring back with Dana to see if we, if we can, again, get that on our, on our agenda for something like a quarterly update. Okay. I can reach out to Dana about that. Like, and then um, I think that we always thought it was a great idea. And then, like you said, COVID came and everything. Um, so I will, I'll do that. Um, the craziest thing is none of these businesses that have space or are, for rent are out on any of the sites. So they're just not being marketed well. They're not being, you know, the township has a space on our township website about available space, property and businesses. And it has been vacant and empty for four years for, I think, since it went up. Uh, would really like to get that rallied around. So if we come across a resource that is willing to give us that information, <laughs> there's Jack, he's got the idea. There are the but, two people uh, right there. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I can. Um... Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, it it's such an easy thing to get that stuff out there. And, uh, you know, we're getting ready to launch the new website for the township. And uh, Jennifer would be more than happy, I know, to update that stuff whenever we have anything to update. And, um, you know, it's just. I, it, it, it just befuddles me that, you know, there's all these places, there, there are a lot of places that have space and none of them are on LoopNet. None of them are out on and they're in, I don't know where they're advertising them because they're not advertising them properly. Yeah. We've got to, we've got to help out with that. Um, yep. The next thing I had is those banners I was talking to you about that we have in my basement here. Um, I cannot get this, these pictures to send, um, I, maybe because I've been doing it from the basement, but those are banners that are about three, three and a half feet tall, 
Um, they're they're not um, religious in nature, but they're all holiday themed. Um, very well made. They're from Bronner's. Um, I just don't. These pictures won't send off my phone. I'll have to find a better way to do it. But we have at least a dozen of them, um, and those were the they hooked to pull the poles that went on the utility poles. Um, and our big problem was having someone put them up and having someone take them down. Um, but we do have these and they have to be up high enough that they can't get damaged by um, vandalism or anything. But it's something that um, if you want, I can contact Browners and find out more about how much it would cost to um, get more of the poles to reattach them. Um, and then we can work on trying to find that DPW person that's going to put them up and take them down. Well, we also have uh, multiple tree trimming companies in the, in the township here that, uh, you know, every, I've talked to two of them about, you know, ways they can help. And, uh, you know, it, it's interesting. One of them helped out the, uh, the Methodist church at putting a, putting something up on their chimney. They've been, struggling for months and months and months on how to get some a sheathing up on their chimney. And uh, <laughs> one of them said, how can I help? I said, Hey, check, check out, go down to the Methodist church and talk to the new pastor there. And he did. And, and they were able to help there, but they, they've got all the equipment. They've got all the ladders. They've got the trucks. They've got the, you know, so maybe it's something that uh, uh, we talk to them about and uh, we start off that way and work to the DPW route eventually. Have you just talked to Dan Lamont? Is he one of the ones you've talked to or? Yeah. Yep. And, and Jason Moffat and yeah. Um, and then the next, I, I will do that. I'll find, I'll take an exact count of these in the basement of the clinic and find out about getting um, a brackets for them. The brackets are called. Um, and then uh, we had to get permission from uh, the utility company to put them on the poles. Uh, most people don't get permission, but we really should. <laughs> um, so, okay, I'll, I'll work on that. And then um, I was wondering, Jenny, if we could get a list of um, everybody's cell phone numbers so that we can do texting a little bit. Um, like, I know I probably could have texted the picture to someone, but I tried emailing them and they just won't go through from my phone. Um, maybe too much color associated with it or something. But if everybody could give Jenny um, a, a cell phone number for texting, would that be okay with everyone? Just email it to me and I'll put together a spreadsheet, like a contact list for us. Okay. All right, thank you. And then one other thing, um, this big, big thorn in my side is 75 Barker. Every time I go by there, I'm so embarrassed about that building. And I know if I owned that building, I'd have all sorts of notices posted all over it that that I've got to do something with it. And I'm, I, I know that every administration says they're going to do something with it and haven't yet. And I, I'm just embarrassed about that place. And we are putting an RFP out. The RFP is out there. We've pushed it out to people, and it's got a definitive timeline. It's got an absolute timeline to it, and you know we'll know by the end of this month if anyone's interested in doing something with it. And if not, um, uh, I'm going to bring forth a recommendation that the board uh, create a larger parking lot uh, with the majority of that property. Um, there was some discussion uh, among a couple people on the board about maybe preserving the old or the uh, newer structure in the back for possibly the uh, the uh, historical society or something to that effect. Because the historical society has had no home. They've been kicked around from place to place to place to place. They've never had a place to set up and establish. And uh, I don't know, it's an interesting idea, but uh, you know, but otherwise, if, if there's not a if there's not a compelling uh, solution, at least uh, me as one board member is ready to uh, put forth. Let's get the building out of the way. Let's get the environmental dealt with and cleaned up, and uh, 
uh, let's get the parking lot. You know, we've already gotten bids on redoing the parking lot. Uh, and I know Matt and, uh, and the township are having discussions about connecting uh, the parking lot. Uh, we're going to move forward with this. There, there's not, you know, we're, we're in, yeah, it, it is time. That's an eyesore in the middle of our community. Um, we either need a very compelling uh, business there or we need more parking there. That, that's just what it comes down to. One thing we, we need is if it's not a compelling business, the building needs to not be there. Even if it's, you know, just grass for right now until we can do something, but it's, it's yeah. But that's where we're at with it. And I can tell you, I'm going to push real hard on that. So thank, thank you. you. And I believe you have all of our support on that. <laughs> sure. I'm sure. Um, I don't have anything else. Um, our next meeting will be in three weeks on um, March 24th. Um, and it'll be a Zoom meeting again. Um, does anybody have anything before we adjourn or is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion, we adjourn. Move by support. Supported by Dignan. Those in favor say aye. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody.